Hey there YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla electric car video with me, Adam Wellinformed. It's fair to say I'm pumped up about this and I've not seen anyone else make these speculations. Two new battery supplies are on their way and one could have a 15-20% increase in battery density and the other claims to not only redefine EV safety standards but thanks to its optimised battery pack structure, the space utilisation of the battery pack is increased by over 50% compared to conventional lithium iron phosphate block batteries. And so according to the reports, Tesla is expected to take delivery of these batteries in Q4 of this year and the other could be already be in the hands of Tesla employees. So what is so special about both of these new batteries and how do they fit within the Tesla Model Y lineup? Crucially, will it increase the range or reduce the entry price of the Tesla Model Y? So whether you're a Tesla owner now or just an aspirational owner, this video will probably get you hyped somewhat for the 2023 Model Y. But with the new sources laid out in front of you, you won't blame me for seeing how Tesla could approve upon their 2020 Model Y lineup. So before I get started, hit the like button to show me some of your virtual love and support for Tesla EV content. Hit the subscribe button to follow my Tesla EV journey with me. And finally, hit the notification bell so you're notified of all my upcoming electric car videos as soon as they're available. Right, let's get into it then. First reported new battery heading its way to Tesla is effectively a higher energy dense version of the already lower cost and extremely practical LFP pack found in the Tesla Model 3 SR Plus and the rear wheel drive Tesla Model Y delivered in China and Australia and more on the significance of that in just a second. Cattle are calling this battery the M3P which has no relevance to the Model 3 performance, that's just a quinky dink or coincidence some would say. The reason why it is theoretically an evolution on the already present cattle LFP pack is that the M3P is speculated to add magnesium and some other uh, metals to the chemistry for which in plain English also means the battery now packs more energy than before. 15-20% to is the number doing the rounds according to this news article but considering such a jump in energy density of this battery one can only assume that it's likely to cost more than a weaker LFP equivalent pack right? Well, we currently know by Tesla standards that the cheapest vehicle that they have on offer via their website today, whether you're in the US or in the UK, Europe or China, they actually have LFP packs already. We already know that LFP Model 3 is super practical and super consumer friendly today because it allows owners to charge to 100% of the time, time after time with minimal impact on the battery health in comparison to other higher energy dense chemistries. Comparing apples to apples, if you own a non LFP battery Tesla, it's, it's recommended that you charge the battery to 80 to 90% for daily usage and up to 100% for long trips only. Whereas in an LFP Tesla, it does not have such a recommendation due to its hard wearing properties. All right, let's bin the science for now. What does that mean for the 2023 Model Y for range expectations? Where will delivery start and at what cost? Is this the new standard range or even a new long range Tesla Model Y? Straight to the point on all of these questions, we actually don't have any definitive confirmation of what that means for Tesla. But that's not going to stop me from speculating on the outcome with the information that we hold today. To start with, these deliveries are expected in Q4 of 2022 and subsequently we should expect, wink wink, deliveries early next year. This is probably an assumption down to how Tesla have turned around sample testing from battery procedurement to final vehicle production previously. But one thing for sure is that the reports themselves are taken directly from local Chinese media reports. Contrary to this, Tesla also tends to deliver new model years of already existing lineups ahead of the year commencement so deliveries of the 2022 model y's actually started around november 2021 so whilst the reports are suggesting early next year could it actually be for the 2023 model y and not physically the 2023 as suggested it's possible and it would be fitting time to actually make that change but equally q1 2023 is not unreasonable I believe the LFP packed Model 3s were introduced for the very first time from Q1 2021. So there is precedent there. But what about the juicy part, Adam? What range could we be looking at? Well, interestingly, Cattle's chief scientist said while announcing the M3P battery technology that it will be aimed at vehicles with 700 kilometers or 435 mile range. That's higher than the current standard range Model Y, which offers a regular LFP pack. Now you're thinking 435 miles for an electric SUV. That can't be right. Well, let's look back in the comment. The current standard range Model Y with the LFP pack sold today is most notably sold in China and more recently Australia. 
it has a 60 kilowatt hour LFP battery and that's rated at 455 kilometers or 282 miles in Australia on WLTP terms. But strangely, 545 kilometers or 338 miles in China on CLTC terms. So the exact same car from the same Giga Shanghai factory utilizes different range testing procedures depending on its market. And when making these range statements without confirmation of what range testing procedure that figure is based on, the same car could have a massive variable just by the difference in the range assessment. Therefore, what we do understand is that the capacity of these new M3P packs is expected to be 72 kilowatt hour packs. So with 12 kilowatt hours more of energy at our disposal and the talk of higher energy density, I think it's fair to say bigger is better on this occasion. Plus, we know that Tesla do not stand still with making weight efficiencies or just general consumption efficiencies on the car itself. Keeping terms really simple, a 20% increase on that CLT range would equate to around 405 miles. So close to that Chief's ballpark estimate figure, Converting that to similar WLTP terms, we could be looking at 338 miles and remembering that's just for a rear wheel drive single motor Model Y. But this is where it's going to create a bit of a problem for Tesla because the rear wheel drive single motor Model Y could have a slightly higher range than the long range dual motor variant. In the UK, that has a rated range of 331 miles on the 20 inch wheels and 331 miles on the 19 inch US rated system of EPA. So if it could achieve range of that level, it's going to cause a bit of a problem when it comes to communicating that Model Y lineup and the value for money when selecting a Model Y. But I think if we look at this from a fresh perspective and a totally new angle, that could help us solve that lineup problem. We've mentioned the Model Y standard range for China and Australia, but there is a similar rear wheel drive Model Y produced in the US from Giga Texas, and that has a rated range of 254 miles, remembering that's EPA rated this time. EPA is the American equivalent to WLTP and is generally lower, but closer to real world range. This Texas Model Y has a smaller battery pack and a totally different chemistry format altogether, but I've already covered that Model Y in a separate video above. But in a nutshell, it has the new front and rear castings and a new structural 4680 battery pack from Tesla. This is brand new for Tesla and how future Model Ys will be structured in some way, no pun intended. But whilst it's new from Tesla, it's actually only sold off menu via the existing inventory tab on the website. Plus, another consideration is that this is actually a dual motor Model Y standard range and not a single motor variant. So to wrap up my M3P battery analysis and how it will fit within the Model Y lineup, the dual motor standard range Model Y currently sold within the US will be discontinued. It's not even sold publicly for order and the lack of reservation capability to me suggests it will be canned at some point like the old standard range Model 3 back in the day. But it will return with a bigger 4680 battery pack and ultimately being the dual motor long range variant. But this M3P battery packs Model Y will then slot in as the standard range variant and may even come direct from the Fremont factory instead. With EPA generally being lower on rated range compared to WLTP, maybe it will hit the just over 300 mile EPA sweet spot. Pretty good for a standard range single motor Model Y and compared to the old sub 250 standard range Model Y that was canned a while back, this would be a pretty sweet entry point for the SUV. However, even if it falls just short of this and hits 280 or the 290 mark, because of its LFP-like lower cost and it's rugged and practical enough to utilize the full 280 or 290 on the daily, no sweat. Considering a long range Model Y today at 90% is running at around 300 miles, overall at 100%, it's only gonna be 40 to 50 miles lower than the current Model Y long range today. But remembering that will eventually be replaced by the 4680 long range Model Y. And to finish this segment off, I also suspect Tesla China will eventually get its hands on this M3 battery for its existing rear wheel drive Model Y variant. However, Europe and potentially the UK will see an entirely different standard range Model Y. So where am I going with this, Adam? Well, it was reported last month that the Berlin factory received some new upgrades of its own. They even tested a new rear wheel drive Model Y and it differs to the currently produced Shanghai Model Y because it has the same single casting and technology used in Giga Texas. So it's moving at one step closer to the ultimate 4680 offering the Giga Texas currently produces in its small volume. But the article 
doesn't actually state which battery was utilized. At first, I thought it makes sense for it to have been the 4680 battery as Giga Berlin has built and set up in a mirrored like fashion to Texas in order to build that Model Y long range in the same unique way with the 4680 batteries. However, fast forward literally a day or two ago, we have seen reports like this, which states Giga Berlin has already received new BYD blade batteries and the factory could be ready to produce models in just a month's time. Again, whilst I am only speculating, Previously, we mentioned that typically Tesla can take up to three months to sample test from battery procedurement to final vehicle production. If this was reported in July and production could start from as early as September, there's your quoted two to three month window. Are you folks with me with this? Is it just me that sees this timeline? Let me know in the comment section below. So what's going to be unique about this new BYD blade battery supply and a cheeky new rear wheel drive Model Y from Berlin? Well, having a single casting like Giga Texas in theory should improve production times and there should be some weight savings in that process. But the real fun or the secret source is the difference in the batteries again. As I understand it, as it isn't really clear from the new reports, the battery chemistry was previously reported to be LFP. But there's going to be a major difference in how that is going to be arranged and looking directly on the website they state it will redefine EV safety standards by passing a rigorous nail penetration test. Let's be honest, safety is immensely important but what I think you folks generally want to hear is the range benefits. Again this information is missing from the latest news reports but BYD do state on the website that due to its optimised battery pack structure the space utilisation of the battery pack is increased by over 50% compared to conventional lithium iron phosphate block batteries. Now, it's not really clear how the space utilisation works or what Tesla has indeed acquired, but an interesting article from Inside EVs in June speculated that maybe Tesla was interested in utilising their structural battery pack, for which Tesla is trying to mirror a 4680 Model Y from Texas, which has a structural battery pack. And whilst this upcoming blade battery is supplied by that third party and not produced in-house like the 4680 pack, amongst being completely different battery format altogether, the principles of having a single casting and a structural battery pack feet a different battery altogether is still very similar. And all whilst the 4680 cells are in limited supply for now, having these batteries allows Giga Berlin to ramp a similar Model Y and receive a consistent supply of available battery cells today. If we do see a structural battery pack with the other weight savings from the single castings, rather than being limited to the 282 WLTP of the Shanghai equivalent Model Y standard range, we could then see a rear wheel drive Model Y be upgraded to that 300 mile sweet spot again. Not forgetting you can charge to 100% and probably get that 300 miles with minimum problems. Also, what's gonna make it a little bit extra special is that it's going to be a European exclusive Tesla model built for the European market for the very first time. Preventing the need to ship a similar model from Giga Shanghai logistically is easier coming from Berlin and hopefully this can be priced under the long range Model Y today. Until Berlin can produce its own 4680 Model Y long range, if it is cheaper than the Model Y long range, I suspect it will only be so marginally. The range differences may be similar to those of the US mentioned above, as the long range WLTP for the long range Model Y is 351 miles with those 19 inch wheel covers. So to conclude, we could see two new Model Y trims and the first Model Y exclusively out of Giga Berlin with BYD blade batteries. I may be completely wrong, but as you've just seen, I've just been through the breadcrumbs left in the reports and to me this is how I could see it playing out over the months to come. This is why it sort of makes sense as to why Giga Berlin has received those batteries first and over the other factories to date. It has the facilities to install these structural battery packs and utilise single castings for the front and the rear, whereas Giga Shanghai and Fremont can straight up incorporate these new M3P batteries from Cattle in a similar fashion to what they already do present with Cattle's LFP batteries, yet still see the range benefits from the chemistry gains. It's clear to me Tesla is not taking its lead for granted and is keen to crack on improving its own range through not only design changes but also integrating new chemistries and technologies produced by its suppliers in order to deliver not just more Teslas but improve Teslas year on year. So what did you guys think? Did you come across the same conclusion or do you think there's going to be a different lineup altogether than what I just predicted? Which one would you prefer in this instance, the M3P battery variant or the BYD blade battery variant? If you're not sure what to comment, you can simply comment Model Y breadcrumbs and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for the support. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video with your friends and family or any other group that you'd find this beneficial. That's it from me this week, folks. I've got some more great informative videos on the way for you. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and ciao. Oh, 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 oh,